something that I do want to say real quick is that I love this game. As much as sometimes in my commentary it may seem like I am criticizing every little thing and don't like it so far, I really, really love this game. And it, it sure it doesn't help that I am actually creating a list of complaints about suggestions that I have for the video, uh, for the game, which sounds pretty negative, but I love this game in general so far, and it's really hard for me to even create a list of what I think this game does right and what is amazing about it. I don't think I could even make a video about that, but in general I just love it. I just want to um, basically find some of the things that might be improved on. I mean, it's amazing to have early access to a game, but the developers did actually um, say that they would like to maybe even have some feedback on what could be better. And it's honestly one of the biggest things uh, which also helps towards making the weekly updates. They've even uh, got interaction in, for example, doing streams in which the people on the stream get asked uh, the question of what sort of new rides or cars they want to have. And it's stuff like that that I think really make this game as great as it is. Uh, but that's really just my personal opinion. It's uh, there's something that I wanted to get out there real quick so that I can <laughs> probably criticize this game to death and talk shit all over it and complain about it all the time but just keep in mind that in general I will still love this game and that's pretty much it. Also I do have to say uh, it is currently the 15th of December and hopefully this video actually gets uploaded on the 15th of December as well which would be a miracle for me since usually they get uploaded a couple of days after I do my commentary but yesterday actually a new update to the game came out which if I do release this video today it's gonna be very relevant um, and it's update 75 which was quite a small update but I'm really happy about it anyway they actually added more changes to the color tool uh, so not only can we actually save our colors right now but we can even um, pick colors from buildings um, so really I would say two of the tools which you see in many of the um, um, what is it? Oh, <laughs> image editing, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, tools that you have on computers, like two of the almost most important tools, uh, being able to pick colors and being able to recolor certain things are now in the game as well. So you can simply click whatever part of scenery you want to have the color from um, to get a color back that you somehow maybe lost by forgetting to save it. And you can instantly recolor stuff, which is going to make it a lot easier to make streets and scenery in general look the way that you want. So I'm really happy about that. Other than that, there's uh, stuff like some new rain, which is still to be worked on. It's a little bit heavy. And finally, the drowning animation is in the game. So one of the things which some people probably looked forward to a lot is actually right here right now. So that's pretty cool. But um, yeah, I'm really, really happy about the color tool. It's one of the things which I did have on my complaint list, so that's something I can scrap out of there, uh, though it's still <laughs> quite extensive. Um, but I, it's certainly going to get some use. This, this footage, as well as the footage from episode 8, is still a little bit old, but uh, from episode 9 onward, um, I am on Alpha 5, so though we won't be seeing the new color pick tool, uh, the new scenery and new rides and things like that will be in the game from that episode onward, which doesn't mean too much, but it does mean that the new stuff from the new updates is in there, such as the new building tools and um, the bobsled coaster, though I most likely won't actually be able to get a bobsled in this, co in this park since there just isn't any room for it, really. Uh, which is one of the things which I do want to say very quickly as well. I got many, many um, comments giving me feedback on what sort of coaster people want to have in the park, which is really awesome. A lot of, I think most of the votes are actually towards a Gerstlauer Eurofighter, which I might do, but I am not quite sure. There were also some people who wanted me to get a wing coaster in, but really the main problem that I have with trying to figure out what sort of coaster I want to have is that the only room that I still have left in this park is tucked away in the bottom left corner and it really isn't that much room so I really doubt if I can actually get a wing coaster in there so I probably won't. Um, ah, there were some other ideas as well which I completely forgot about I think but so far it's I think the uh, Eurofighter is the most popular choice. My own choice would have actually been to try a aero coaster in there since it seems like 
I've got a bit of a rectangular space left and in order to fill that um, as well as the fact that the space is not that large I figured a arrow mega looper could actually be a thing as well but then again it's probably something that I'm just gonna mess with and see what works best in that position. It's really hard for me and I'm quite sorry about that. It's really hard for me to take suggestions and uh, just implement them no matter what since sometimes things just don't work out in your park and to be quite honest sometimes I just also don't really have any inspiration or any feel for building a particular kind of ride. I um, At the moment, I'm still sort of tossing it between the Eurofighter and the Mega Looper idea. So that's uh, something that I want to get in there um, <laughs> to actually talk about what is relevant in this video, which I haven't been doing. I'm a bit sorry for that. Uh, is that this is currently the Lock Flume Station, which is one of the things which I really wanted to get done. In hindsight, I'm not too happy about it. I kind of went into it figuring that I could build a Alpine station, much like the ones that are very popular in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, with a lot of woodwork in there, but it didn't turn out to be quite as nice as I was hoping to. In isometric view, I do think it still looks alright, but in, um, in 3D view, it is just terrible. It, it doesn't really have the density or detailed woodwork that makes such a building look really good, which is uh, honestly one of the issues that I do still have if I want to make buildings like this in Park Tech. You can get a general sense of the shape of buildings and a general design very much right in Park Tech, but when it comes to buildings that just need those very small details to actually make them look like what they're supposed to be, uh, which I think the Alpine buildings uh, with a lot of woodwork are an example of, it just doesn't work too well yet. Uh, there is probably going to be an Alpine set in some sort of future for this game. It's a pretty popular theme, but so far it's it's pretty hard to actually do it. And I like to say that I tried for this station, but sort of failed. And it's not too bad, but you can kind of notice that I spammed a lot of trees in front of it, which is sort of the standard sort of procedure. If you have an ugly building, just get some trees in front of it and uh, it'll look sort of good automatically. That's, um, <laughs> I kind of, I don't know if anybody, um, anybody else is interested in that sort of stuff, but when architects, like, pre-render their buildings to show off how it looks, sometimes they'll just spam loads of trees in front of it, or, um, even so many planters and balconies and have a lot of green, and that's basically how you can tell that people are trying to sort of mask the fact that the building didn't quite turn out as, uh, good looking as it could have been, usually, that is. And it's what I usually do to cover up my less good buildings. <laughs> so that's a bit of a confession about that. And uh, a tip, if you ever have a building and you think it's ugly, but you don't want to remove it, just place a lot of foliage in it. And uh, I mean, not in it, uh, around it. And it's going to be all right, eventually. Or at least it's not going to look too bad. Uh, that being said, I'm not too much going to worry about it. Um, since, in the end, I don't want to make this park being filmed or photographed in 3D look. I might do a couple of 3D shots, but it's not my main sort of thing. Which is really just because I believe that since this game is originally isometric and has very simple graphics and it's sort of an ode to the old Roller Coaster Tycoon games, especially in the way that it looks, um, it just looks best in isometric view and when you go into 3D view you kind of delete that entire sense of fantasy that this game has, which is something that I wouldn't like to break. It's... When you turn on 3D, it becomes less like a um, fantasy, less like a less like a game reality, and more like a real-life simulation, which I don't think Park Tech is uh, or should be. It's... I like the graphics for what they are, but it's definitely not uh, to be played like Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 is, or at least that's my view on it. Uh, which is why I might do some POVs just for the hell of it and because they are so popular in the final video that I'm going to make for this park. But the main focus will really just be an isometric view. Which is, uh, I guess, just more of a personal opinion uh, that I think it looks better. But um, yeah, that's that. I will make a final video, but just in isometric view and going over the attractions and having a POV here and there. But uh, anyway, I'm out of time for this episode. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Um, hopefully, that is. Uh, otherwise, uh, have a good one.